Hello everyone, today I will introduce to you object segmentation in LiDAR 360 MLS. I will primarily discuss how to perform object segmentation, modify object segmentation results, and calculate certain parameters based on object segmentation. Currently, the software supports the two categories of tree and pole. Object segmentation is based on classified data, and thus, we strongly recommend using the classify by deep learning function to perform classification before carrying out object segmentation. Now, under Facility, click Object Segmentation, and we can see in the Object Segmentation window the object types, which include tree and pole. The parameters used by tree and pole are different, so the models are distinct from one another. If we select tree, we should choose vegetation in the point class. If we select the pole model, we should choose a different point class. First, in the tree model, we need to input a ground point class, and then input an object point class. The ground point class refers to the category of the ground points in the point cloud after classification. Here, the ground point category in this data is checked as the second category, ground. To classify trees, in the object point class, the fifth category of high vegetation should be checked. The software provides a button to hide other categories. That is, we can hide other categories so that the 3D window will only display checked categories, which makes data easier to distinguish and view. There are two modes, global and region. In the global mode, all point clouds in the current project will undergo object segmentation. On the other hand, in region mode, we can select specific areas. For example, if we select this area, the subsequent object segmentation will only be performed on this area. There is also the factor of seeds, which we can either set manually or automatically generate through a function. Now, I will show you how to automatically generate seeds. After selecting the area, click Segment and we will be prompted to clear the previous segmentation results. If you have selected other areas of segmentation, you should choose No to keep those segmentation results. If they are no longer needed, then select Yes. This dataset has not been segmented before, so selecting Yes or No will lead to the same results. After the segmentation is completed, the 3D window will switch to the display with additional attributes by default. Due to the fact that we are using the tree model, the software will automatically switch to the tree ID display mode, which is convenient for viewing the segmentation results. At the same time, in the feature object table, the information of several single objects that have been segmented will also be displayed. Like now, there are four segmented trees and four corresponding records are displayed here. We can also continue to select a new area and click Segment. At this time, we should choose No to keep our previous segmentation results. This way, after the object segmentation of this area is complete, new records will be added and displayed in the Feature Object table. It can also be seen that just now, we accidentally selected some irrelevant points when we were drawing the selected frame, which led to these points also undergoing object segmentation as they are in the same category. In short, this is how we automatically segment and generate seed points in the software. We can also add seed points manually and set them to grow. Now, how do we accomplish this? Click the Add Seed Point button below the seed point and click on the base of these unsegmented trees to generate seed points. After adding the seed points, we frame the area. Since these seed points exist, we only need to choose Grow and can cancel the option of generating seed points if we would like. Then, click Segmentation to save the previous results as well. We can see that based on the seed points we added manually, 
that the trees are segmented into single objects. No matter whether if they are manually added seed points or automatically generated seed points, we can shift the view by selecting the seed points. This button is to update seed points. This is because the seed points are vectors and will be saved in the tree vector layer. On that same note, if we clear all the seed points from the directory tree layer, the seed points will be deleted in the window. Thus, we can click the update button whenever we want to update the current seed points. Since we have carried out the segmentation, Choosing to update will reload each of the corresponding seed points. Now, let's discuss how we can carry out tree object segmentation. There are some parameters that can be set here. The first one, initial branch height, is the lowest tree height in the selection area, and any trees above this value in the framed area will be segmented. You can enter or adjust the desired minimum tree height to be segmented in this box. The second parameter, Max cluster radius is the minimum distance between clusters. The default value here is 1 meter. The third parameter is min cluster point size. It will be defined as a cluster if the number of points contained in a single selected group is greater than 10. These are three parameters that can be automatically adjusted according to the data. The process of object segmentation of poles is similar to that of trees. Select a ground point category and choose the pole category. For example, here, under Object Point Class, we will click Other Classes and check Static Cars for the pole category. Because we check the Hide Unselected button, only the ground point and pole category are being displayed. Since the distribution of poles is more sparse in region mode, we can switch to global mode to improve inclusion of seed points that can be generated and segmented. Again, there is a reminder of whether to clear objects, but because these poles have not been processed before, we choose no. After segmentation, any new additional attributes are displayed in the 3D window. Because the ID of the pole is recorded with additional attributes, after segmentation, it is stored in the folder where the point cloud is located and will generate an LIATT file. If we accidentally delete this file and reopen the software and this data, the additional attribute data will be lost. Thus, we recommend not to delete this file. These are the results of the additional attributes of the pole. After segmentation, the feature object table will switch directly to the table of poles and we can see that a total of 68 objects have been segmented. Under Vector, click Pole and then the attribute table of poles should open where we can view and select the attributes of the 68 recorded objects. Although these are seed points in the software, there is also a vector layer to save seed points. In object segmentation, whether from manually created seed points or automatically individualized segmentation, the branches of trees can be intertwined, so the segmentation effect cannot guarantee 100% accuracy, and manual edits may be required to make some minor adjustments. Now, how do we perform individualized editing? Under Facility, click Object Edit and we need to activate the Individualize Edit button and we can choose between the types of tree and pole. Here, I will show you an example of individualized editing of a tree. First, click on the area intended to edit. Press and hold the left mouse button to draw a box and the profile window will open on the right and display the data within the box. Pay attention when using Load Edit Region to load the data because individual edits will be stored in memory. Now, what we are going to do is merge these red points to these green ones. Here, we can check the ID of these individual points and can see that the tree ID of these red points is 1 and the tree ID of these green points is 10. In the settings, we can set the display for category as well as for individuals. 
For example, we can uncheck 0 and 19 to hide them, so that only the red and green points will be displayed, making it easier to view. Regarding categories, since we're going to edit trees now, we'll only check the class of high vegetation. Now, how do we classify this red point as a green point? There are two ways. The first is to click the Set ID by Pick button and select the red point and then click the green point to merge the two objects. The other way is to use the Selection button and select this area and then click the green point to merge the two selected objects. Press Ctrl Z to undo. These are two ways to perform merge on existing objects and save them. After saving, we can see in the 3D window that the results are linked in real time. For example, here, the blue points need to be merged to the red ones. We can select the blue points and then click the red points, and they will be merged. Click Save, and we can see that the two objects are now merged as one. These are some ways to make some minor adjustments. We can also delete an object or add a new object through the Object Edit button. How do we delete an object? Perhaps, for example, due to poor classification, we may have unnecessary or irrelevant data. In this case, there are four objects that are not originally in the category of tree. Draw a box and click the Delete button. Then, click on the four objects to delete them, and then click Save to save the changes. The process of creating a new object is similar. To segment these trees into individual objects, click the Add button to draw a frame around the point cloud to the desired shape and segment it into an object. The points within that frame will be added as another object. This way, every time we add an object, it will be displayed in this place in real time and we will be able to tell if an object has been added or deleted. These were some ways of how to edit add or delete an object. It is recommended that we open the setting window when object editing so we can control the category to be edited in real time and so we can check in real time whether an object is newly added or deleted. We can also hide and display unnecessary objects when editing. This way, errors can be avoided. When objects have been edited, in this case, where each tree has been segmented as intended, we can do some parameter calculations. This time, we click the Vertical Feature Parameter button and select Tree under Type to perform parameter calculation. We can see that four parameters will be calculated by default, including dbh, height, angle, and crown width. Here, we can select a certain object to calculate. After the calculation is completed, the dbh will be displayed in the left window, and the height, angle, and crown width will be displayed in the right window. It can be clearly seen that we were not careful when previously editing this object, and so the calculation of these parameters of this tree is inaccurate. Therefore, it is essential to check the data of individual objects before performing parameter calculation. We can also choose to select and calculate all objects. After the calculation, the parameters of all objects will be displayed in the window. For example, if we click any one of them, we can view its parameters in the two display windows. Because the height of 1.3 meters above ground is used when calculating the diameter at breast height, if the calculation result is inaccurate, we can also correct it manually. In the 3D window on the left, we can click the button of DBH fitting to refit a DBH through the three-point mode. And then, the real-time fitting result will be updated in this table. 
In the right window, we can check whether the calculation of this parameter is accurate by switching between different views. We can also re-measure the height, crown width, and angle. For example, if we re-measure the height of this tree, we can see that the re-measured height is 6.771 meters and it will be updated in this table in real time. The same goes for angle and crown width. The results after object calculation is not only stored in the object table, but also synchronized in the attribute table in real time. It can be seen that the dbh height, angle, and crown width of each vector will be recorded in the attribute table. They can be sorted through the attribute table and viewed again or for subsequent use. This is the end of the introduction to object segmentation, editing, and vertical feature parameter. Thank you for watching.